Hi, we have a lot of exciting updates this month, so let's get started. And breaking news is definitely Databricks apps. And the highlight of this month is Databricks apps because they are really amazing. And when you go to your compute in more or in many of regions, you will find option apps and you can create here apps using for example, one of the most popular Python frameworks like Dash, Flask or Streamlit. Or you can even deploy your own custom application using or your own Python code. And then business users, instead of going to your workspace, can, for example, consume and use that application. And what we can achieve with that? It's anything uh, which you can imagine because we can pass to that application resources from your workspace. So for example, we can pass job and this application will know job ID or we can pass secret serving cable and SQL warehouse. And then in that business application, it can use that resources to perform action in your lakehouse, in your data intelligence platform. So for example, I've designed this app for business users, which is triggering the job. So instead of going now to workflows and looking for the job, they have URL and they can come here and they can select options, parameters, and then just click run job and the job is running. So you can do really amazing things using Databricks apps. And we will deep dive to Databricks apps in another uh, my video uh, another uh, update which is uh, really important is the new runtime now we have runtime 16 which is in beta and this runtime brings a lot of improvements my favorite ones are related to liquid clustering because you can finally use liquid clustering with stream so you can write your stream to liquid partitions. And also it's possible now to do full optimize to re re recalculate all clustering. It can be beneficial in many use cases because liquid clustering using uh, AI model, which is uh, reading read and write operations. So that uh, optimization is much more bigger than other optimization because it's trying to adjust your data and rewrite everything to match that read and write patterns. Uh, another update related to uh, runtime uh, 16 is machine learning runtime because that machine learning runtime can use now uh, in a feature client views as a feature table. So I think it will uh, make life of many data scientists much more easier because uh, not uh, always you want to recalculate your whole data and use table as a feature tables, but now you can use views. Uh, another update is related to SQL editor. Now you have a new SQL editor which you can uh, turn on here and nice feature is uh, collaboration uh, because you can work with an, uh, your colleague in real time on SQL, uh, SQL queries. Here are a lot of different small improvements. So for example, if we select something, we have now options to add comment or uh, trigger assistant and assistant will work with us on that selection. So for example, we can write for that selection for example, make it lower case because maybe we don't remember SQL function. It will, it will generate the code for us. Yes, so it's correct. There are a lot of improvements in auto completion. And for example, it's displaying here as name. Uh, it's using uh, LLM AI model for that. So we can click tab and accept that auto completion. And even, for example, in joins, it proposing joins using uh, the knowledge which, uh, which assistant is collecting from your Unity catalog and from your previous queries. So here automatically proposing, it is proposing join to join with 
uh, another table, which is which is transaction table. Now it's possible in general availability to use vector search function inside SQL. So we, when we have a vector search index and endpoint, we can run the query. And for example, here we are uh, looking for product name latte, but in multidimensional space in it found for us products related to this, for example, milk. Another updates are related to dashboards. It's really nice that every week we are getting new updates uh, related to dashboards and new version of dashboards. So uh, development process uh, is, is really accelerating. And for example, now we have a box chart, uh, which you can see here. It's a new type of chart which was added. So here you can see uh, the minimum, maximum value, uh, 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 quartiles, and for example, median. Uh, it's a really nice chart, so I can I can look how many cheese is consumed per person in average. And uh, another update related to dashboard is that uh, Jenny workspace where you can ask question about your data is deployed automatically together with dashboard. And it's really nice because you have this ask Jenny button and you can be redirected to Jenny workspace and uh, start to talk about our shop and ask questions. And also there is new feature, which is also really nice uh, because now we can we can go to share and we can embed dashboard. So we have that iframe code, which is allowing us to embed dashboard outside of Databricks. But rem remember that both for this functionality, also the same is for apps. The user still needs to authenticate against our workspace. So they need to, uh, they need to log into Databricks anyway, but they can do it outside of Databricks. So on the page where we embed apps or embed dashboards. Another updates are related to uh, CLI and specifically Databricks asset bundles, which are my favorite way to deploy code to stage and to production. Uh, so for example, here there was added option that also all purpose clusters can be managed through dApps. So in fact, you can use it to manage all purpose clusters in your workspace, or maybe you want your jobs to run on all purpose clusters in some cases. So you can, you can uh, deploy that resources using dApps. And also presets uh, has been added to dApps. So you can uh, configure a few, uh, few options, which are the most popular ones in your, uh, in your targets. My favorite uh, preset is prefix because before that I had always to mess with bundle files and add variables to prefix my jobs. And now I can just specify prefix here. And the last update for that month is general availability of publishing your semantic model to Power BI workspace. So if you, de if you define uh, primary on foreign keys in your model, then uh, Power BI will read that data and uh, out of the box create all relations in your data. Uh, that's all updates for that month. Thank you very much for watching and see you next month.